Hi everyone, Alex here from Australian Detailing Professionals and on this very chilly Melbourne morning, uh, it's about three degrees outside, uh, I'm with Reese from MCW Detailing and uh, he's here today with us to tell us a little bit about his business based in Port Melbourne. How you going, Reese? Good, thanks. Yourself, it is excellent. It is, excellent. A, bit chilly it is morning, a little bit chilly, but yeah. I've been doing some squats. Otherwise, at Melbourne, so <laughs> exactly, exactly. Come from Brisbane, it's a bit different. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks for having me, and yep, uh, let's let's jump into it. Um, how did you uh, get into this business, and why? So, business started in May 2021. Mm -hmm. um, so pretty much within that COVID peak, um, yeah. I had just come straight fr uh, fresh out of school. So right, wow. straight from school to to the uni course, business management course, um, and I absolutely hated business management. I was <laughs> like, I, I love business management, but the course that they offered, um, it just wasn't for me. So yeah. I started to do a little bit of a side hustle, started off with sort of your maintenance uh, detailing, so the very, very early stages of detailing. And it was just something that I had a passion for. I was already into cars obviously being um, a pretty enthusiastic car fan and then obviously growing that into sort of a detailing wise and it picked up pretty quickly so it's only been about two three years uh, in yeah. the business sense but obviously been doing it a little bit longer than that so yeah. yep. it is pretty fresh but yep did you learn anything in that business school that you you've applied that <sighs> yeah not to do out? not to do a degree with them yeah, <laughs> really? okay. yeah, yeah I think yeah. Um, obviously in some instances degrees are needed but I think yep. for detailing wise especially in Melbourne we yep. Australia we don't have that sort of expertise to be offered in, yeah. a, in a business related sense, especially yeah. in Melbourne. So yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely something that I think if you've got ambitions to be an entrepreneur and start up yeah. your own business, it's definitely something that I'd advise to do. Yeah. But Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And did you uh, do any mobile work or straight? I did, yeah. So yeah. I started, um, so I was about a year and a half mobile yeah. on the road. Yeah. Um, and that obviously started with very limited skill levels. So you grow and obviously understand working in different conditions, different climates and sort of understanding how to sort of work efficiently. Yep. I think that was the main thing of mobile, but obviously quality wise, you're never going to get anything mm -hmm. near what being in a shop was. Yes. Um, yeah. And then 2022 opened up the shop and it's, yeah, it's, yeah, great. Pretty yeah, it's a beautifully presented shop, as I was saying, Thank you know, you. Really Instagram comes up really well. Can you describe the range of services that you offer? Yeah, so I mean, most of what we do is paint correction, ceramic coating. That's typically mm -hmm. what people come to us for. Obviously we yeah. do a full range of services offering from starting from the maintenance to interior, full exterior transformations. Um, and then we are also planning to get into more of the dent repairs and cool. offering PPF services as well. So it's something that is slowly growing, um, or actually rapidly growing, I should mm -hmm. say. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's slowly sort of expanding uh, with what we want. And yeah, there are main, main sort of services that we offer in terms of that detailing. Can you explain the main brands and products that you use? Yeah, so we, um, we align ourselves with G-Technic a lot. So we do, most of our coatings are G-Technic. Um, yep. So obviously we work the warranties with that as well, but um, we stick to Gion and Menzerna as well, Rupes. Um, mm. I think they're pretty much the main brands that most people use in the industry. Yep. Um, and then we are actually using a lot of Apex now as well, which has been pretty good. So okay. yeah, um, we look, we always love trying out new brands and new products and stuff. And it's, it's yep. definitely something that you got to try it to sort of understand how the product works. We see it a lot with even consumers that, or customers as well that come to us and they've said, I've used this product, I've used this product, and mm. you see the after effects and it's, it's chalk and cheese from what you'd actually get with yep. professional product grades and um, sure. yeah, there is a, a wide range that we use. I'm curious when you run two coding brands, for example, how you decide what you'll use on what, like, yep. do, how do you weigh that up when you're approaching it's, I mean, it's obviously coming down to what the, the customer wants. Yep. At the end of the day, that is our most highest priority, sort of what they want and what they expect from a coating. Yep. Um, we do try and push sort of the most, what we recommend the most, which is obviously the higher versions of G-Technics, so the CSR, the CSU. Yep. Um, they're giving obviously the most warranty with that, but also the better product. And yep. you're getting the better result with that as well. But again, if people say to us, you know, we want to apply this, we, we will go out of our way to sort of get that that coating for them, yep. apply it onto their car. So it's, it's yep. understanding different processes and that's why using different brands of coatings as well, especially mm -hmm. understanding, you know, the application of what people want. So in the, in the event that do, you know, they do say, I want this coating done, I want this sort of yeah. brand, yeah. we know how to apply it. And you're ready to go. Yeah, excellent. Exactly okay, right. Great. Do you offer any guarantees or warranties on your work and how, do, how does that work? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, obviously, most of which is not going to come with just your standard detail, so a full pre-sale detail, for example, that's not really going to get much warranty in that. But with the coatings, uh, obviously, that's where the warranties come into play. So, mm -hmm. um, it's ranging from like three, five and nine year warranties that we offer um, through G-Technic, which is obviously a, a beautiful thing that they offer as well. Yes. Um, and yeah, I think most of which we are pretty on top of the, the, the warranties as well, because I know people, they tend to just get out warranty cards and mm. don't do much with them. So yep. we are pretty stingent on 
applying it and then sort of upholding that um, with our customers and we do run that with them as well um, yeah, great. after the services have been provided. Yeah. Yep, yep. Can you describe the most challenging detailing project you've worked on and how you managed it? So there are a few. I mean, obviously, we've done so many cars that it sort of blanks your mind sometimes. Yeah. But the, yeah, cars that obviously stand out to me are some, most of which are the classics. So you work okay. on Aston Martin DB6s, 7s, and yep. they typically are ones that stand out. But we recently worked on a BMW M3. Okay. Um, that job in particular was here for about a week, and we had done full sort of a full deep paint correction. But not only that, we had wet sanded a few pan panels wow. to get sort of the orange peel nibs yeah. out. Um, previously, it had been resprayed on about six different panels, and right. wow. within that, uh, the panels had been resprayed at different times. Yeah, and sure. At what different what panel variant? Sorry, was that? Do you remember the for variant? The, oh, the M3. Oh, it was the E90 E46. E46, cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, just got Josh getting on a little bit. Yeah, so <laughs> um, E46. Yeah, so yeah, E46 yeah, M3, cool. and it was um, the, it was pearl. Oh no, so it was platinum white. I think it was. Okay. And, um, yep. Yeah. So that had been sprayed at like six different times. You could tell looking mm. at the paint and even judging it by the paint depth <laughs> that it was different levels. So you try and match what one significant panel would be like the bonnet. You try and match the rest of the car to that. And it's sort of, yeah. it's difficult in that sense, but we mm. always love that sort of challenge to be able to sort of correct it to a standard where it's, you're almost making floors to match yeah. other floors within the paint. Because if you, if you make a panel too perfect and the other panels mostly significantly have a lot of orange peel or a lot of sort of you know, ripples in the paint and there's, yep. there's obviously so much you can do with a car like that. So, mm. Mm. yeah, trying to do the best for, for that and obviously the customer mm. was happy with that. So Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that is challenging when you have a car come in that's had a few owners and perhaps doesn't know the history exactly particularly. Right. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, you, it's a bit hard sort of also educating them on what, what yeah. has been done because I know some yeah. people, they just don't want to hear it. They don't want to yeah, hear that's right. that their panels have been resprayed several different times. Exactly. But it is sort yeah. of trying to make that education to the customer as well that yeah we can only do so much within that paint yes that's um, right. and yep. trying to bring the most perfect result out of that as we can yeah, yeah have you noticed any common detailing misconceptions you'd like to address i think look, one that most details would say is that we sort of are aligned with car washing car maintenance and yep. it's far from that obviously mm -hmm. that's a very common misconception and a lot of which is just the fine intricacies of what makes detailing detailing mm -hmm. um and typically as well with what i was saying earlier just the common misconception of we will get everything perfect. We'll make it 100%. Mm. Cars aren't always going to be able to sort of give that opportunity to be 100% unless it's a brand new car straight from the dealership. Yep. And even then, with new cars nowadays, paint depths and paint thinness mm. is becoming worse and worse. And especially even with orange peel coming from the manufacturer, it is something that's a lot harder to work with. Yep. Um, and I believe that, yeah, it's just, it's not always going to be 100% result, mm. but sort of being able to get as close as we can to that detailing is about sort of doing as much as you can, doing as the best job you can to get the most perfect result yep. as possible. Yep. So That's we always try and promote that with our marketing as well. That yep. Yep. That's a great point. That. I mean, so much is, is in the maintenance afterwards as well. So yeah, exactly. And, and that's yeah. another one. It's, you know, you can get your car detail, you get it ceramic coated. And yep. most people think once it's coated, just need to rinse it, yep. let it, you don't even need to dry it. It's, yep. not, it's not how it works. It's, yeah. it's yep. upholding it sometimes even more than what a typical Mm. pre-coating would be it's mm. um yeah caring from a coating is obviously a big step in detailing and the aftercare of it yep um and that's something as well that a lot of people don't sort of really understand they just think that mm. once it's on i'm set for life and yes um are there any specific types of vehicles that you enjoy working on or types of work that you enjoy working on and conversely anything that you don't enjoy working on yeah yeah so i'm a, I'm a pretty european enthusiast in terms of my car manufacturer so i'm yep. um, massive Merc fan and I, I obviously enjoy working on a lot of Mercedes, BMWs and Lamborghinis, Ferraris, all that sort of stuff. So right. there's that and then there's also the classics. I love working on classics and sort of being under, able to understand the history behind not only what the owner has done to the car but the paintwork and obviously the interior and you can sort of tell a story with that and there's always something that has always fascinated me about classic cars that you sort of get that that full history and you're sort of contributing to that that next step. You yeah sort of want to add to preservation of the vehicle and the paintwork rather than sort of correcting it, making a beautiful, beautiful piece of artwork. Sometimes yeah. you get rust, you get a little bit of mm. defects and panel. That's all in history and we sort of love working with stuff like that. And yeah, um, yeah, you do yeah. have obviously JDM, which gets a pretty yeah. pretty fond interest. Um, yeah, awesome. And the, sorry, my second part was. <laughs> um, oh yeah, and just, um, you know, conversely what you don't like doing, you know, um, stand out. Stuff. Look, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of what's what's coming ahead. Mm -hmm. I think new cars are sort of steering into a very automated, just you mm -hmm. get it once from the shop, 
and that's it. Like you sort of just get what you get. Mm. Um, similar to what we were just saying earlier with the paint debts, it's just, it's getting worse and worse and there's not much care that's being put into new cars being manufactured and nothing. Mm. There's definitely sort of a, a bit of a dull moment when you think of stuff like that. Mm. Um, there's mm. not much character that's put in and much thought, I think, with the new future cars. But yeah, obviously you get a few, few main brands that sort of stick out with Tesla's paint as well. In particular, yeah. you hear so many stories that come from there with mm. painted panels that aren't even sort of sprayed on the edges correctly. And yeah. working with that, it, it makes our, our job a little bit harder, um, yeah. especially telling the customer when they've just picked up a brand new Tesla, mm. you think, yeah, it's going to be perfect. Don't, don't even question me. Don't even call me saying, hang on, why is there sort of a panel, you know, not sprayed? What do yeah. you mean by that? So yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a bit hard in that sense, but obviously a challenge is a challenge and we enjoy sort of being able to sort of work within that. Yes. Um, yep. And yeah, it's obviously with every business that you see challenges like that. Yep, yep. Excellent. Good stuff. Mate. No pet hair. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't get too much of that in here, I'm guessing. Um, I actually don't mind it. To be <laughs> don't mind it? Yeah. I don't mind pet hair. It's, yeah, right. Because <laughs> it's a satisfying transformation. I mean, obviously, True. That yeah. is one thing with those carpets, yeah. like really sort of cheap, cheap carpets. Yes. They are the worst. Yeah. With. And <laughs> everyone right. says it like, there's no way of cleaning it. If you get those really sort of just tiny, thin hairs, yeah. forget about it. Bye. Yeah. What are the plans for the future of your business? Is there any new technologies or services you'd like to incorporate in the coming year or two? Yeah, for sure. As I said, PPF is a massive one that we've sort of been very close to introducing. It's yep. We've had plans to do it with, uh, within this year, but um, it's just finding the right people. We, we really are mm. sort of pushing for the best person to apply that and yes. obviously with training courses as well um trying to sort of introduce that myself yep. um and then as well like we are looking to relocate to a bigger shop and that's very sort of exciting news for us obviously being here only a couple of years and mm. sort of needing to expand that quickly right. um yes yeah, so that's that's pretty close around around the corner so yep. opening a new shop getting sort of within a bigger market obviously um yeah just offering a lot more services in, in the sense of that Tell us a bit about yourself personally, what you like to do outside of work. Um, as I said, look, cars is pretty much my main personality. It, it doesn't yeah. get much more than that, but um, I mean, my music as well, I'm a sort okay. of, look, I do, I'm, I'm pretty creative in terms of that sense. I've obviously got an eye for detail in that sense. So I yep. enjoy um, drawing as well. So that's sort of yeah. started in school. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. Cooking, which yeah. is awesome. a bit of a strange one. And then golf as yeah. well. I enjoy golf, footy. Okay. Yeah. Um, sort of the main things that yeah. most people would say, I guess. Excellent. But yeah, no. Nah, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, do you have any tips, uh, car care tips for people at home, uh, just general care or questions you get asked a lot about, you know, how to look after cars and keep them looking great? Yeah, absolutely. I think look, the main one we get a lot, especially after the ceramic coating application, we sort of run down the customer what is expected and what sort of works best for the mm -hmm. coating. Yep. Um, typically, we do promote the chemicals itself. Um, so a lot of people don't really understand sort of the, the ways of which chemicals work towards paintwork. In terms um, of washing. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. So pH yeah. neutral, non-acidic chemicals with yeah. especially ceramic coating. So making sure that it works within that. But there are also boundaries you can go into sort of acidity and basic mm -hmm. levels of pHness to help actually aid in sort of assisting with the car care products yes. and the application of what will go ahead and clean your car better. So, mm. um, and there's also sort of chemicals that are correlated to then the wash method. So the obviously the standard two bucket method, but mm -hmm. I think a lot of people will sort of just assume that um, a lot of sort of those laser washes as well, especially are good for their car. It's, mm. It typically isn't that way like that. Yep. I know some are okay. Like they do use a lot of chemicals that are safe and they're, they've yep. been a bit better lately, but yeah, you do get a lot of people that go through those automatic car washes that are left with the sealant or a wax that's sort of on their paint and yep. they typically think that it's it's okay for that to sort of go ahead and clean their car better than what they would by hand. I think I always push for a hand wash at home if you can. Yeah, Obviously point. there are going to be times where you can't do that and finding the right detailer within your area is yep. always a good way to start and I'm sure most of them would offer sort of maintenance and little monthly plans that would work like we do mm. Um, mm. that sort of assist in, in aiding for that as well. Yeah, great. I mean, I often hear that people say, oh, but I use touchless and like, yeah, touchless sounds good in theory, but what's doing the heavy lifting? It's exactly obviously right. stronger chemicals and alkalis yeah. and you start to lose plastics and things like that. Exactly right. And yeah. they don't realise that sort of deteriorating on a, on a chemical level is often sometimes worse than on a physical level That's with those true. big big spindle brushes that go yeah. ahead and you drive in like you used to, but yep. I'm sure they've still got some of those, but yes. they yeah. can often do more damage through chemical waste. So mm. touchless mm. isn't always the best way to do it. And I think yeah. always going through the right steps, understanding the chemicals, it's like for your skin, you know, skincare is very similar to how you would treat your car. It's, yep. you've got pores yep. on the paint, you've got ways of sort of deteriorating paint over time. Yes. 
the whole thing about sort of keeping your car in the best condition is sort of with, withholding that as much clear coat as you can and yeah. being able to care for that yeah. um, in that sense, yeah. And yeah, not being afraid to call your detailer if you've got any questions because they're always happy to help. They really, really exactly care about right. the work. They do put their heart and souls into it. So um, yeah, never hesitate to pick up the phone and, and uh, speak to your detailer. Uh, how do people find you? So you can find us at mcw underscore melbourne on instagram mm -hmm. uh, we also uh, have a website so h oh, i'm not gonna say http http colon you're a detailer you're a oh, detailer i like that um, that's good what do i use to say i'll do that again that's all good it's all good so you can find us on instagram at yep. mcw underscore melbourne we're on facebook as well instagram i oh, just said instagram <laughs> that's all good that's a good i'll start now i'll start from the top and make a yeah, make a new shot but uh, you know you're cool yeah just insta insta website, website. yeah only right, fans. Look, i'll just say <laughs> yeah, that's right. look, i'll just say i'll just say the instagram and you can find everything on there right. yeah exactly or website and yeah, yeah website's yeah. probably the main one or am i really old <laughs> i don't know no yeah, uh, it's socials one. these days isn't it? Reese, thanks so much again for catching up with me. We've had a few chilly moments with the brain here trying <laughs> yes. to keep it rolling, but I think we've, <laughs> we've been successful. Um, love your shop. Um, yeah, great to meet both of you guys, and congratulations on everything you're doing in the future. And, um, yeah, I think you should be very proud of what you've achieved here, mate. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks that. again. Cheers. Oh, good. Thanks, guys. Thanks.